What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we have the guide for how to unlock the brand new Goffinen or Gofanon or Jimmy Fallon Forge, whatever you want to call it, just introduced into Destiny 2. Now I apologize for being a little bit late with this, but it came out at the exact same time as the new Scourge of the Past raid, which obviously took all of my attention. By the way, if you do want to know how to do this brand new raid, I have released my complete raid guide check it out, get in there, get some amazing loot. But the Goffinen Forge, how do you unlock this? Well, there actually isn't really an obvious indicator. The first thing you need to do is, well, speaking of the raid, go into the raid. Now you won't actually have to do anything special. You can do this solo. In fact, there isn't even a light level limit to get in. So no matter what, you can go in there and you just have to be able to kill a few enemies because killing enemies in this opening part, in this initial encounter of the raid will get you the particular item you need, which is stolen black armory gear, a random drop from enemies within this area. Now, once you get it, you can leave that raid instance and head to Ada 1 to continue with this quest. After that, your quest is going to update and now you have to collect Tainted Gear, which is acquired by killing Fallen with precision shots. For this, I would recommend going into the Trossland and going into a lost sector. You can go in by yourself, no one else will steal your kills, kill all of the basic enemies, go out of the lost sector and go back in, all the enemies will reload, you'll get it in no time. Now after you've collected all 35, your quest step is going to update again and this time you're going to have to go to the spider in the Tangled Shore. Talk to him and he will update your quest step one more time and now you've got to do two different things. Firstly, you have to get 75 fallen melee kills while in the Tangled Shore area and also you have to complete a cryopod heroic public event. Now, you can simply wander around the Tangled Shore busting skulls because the only public event that will spawn here is going to be a cryopod and then you can just complete it. Now, for anyone maybe unaware of how to activate heroic, all you need to do is kill the first two waves of enemies. When the big boss jumps out, hurt him a little bit until the ground around the cryopod is doing that freezing effect that's hurting you. But you're going to see on the cryopod itself, smoke coming out of vents. Shoot these vents, they're gonna blow open and expose spheres that you can pick up and throw at the big boss. Once you've hit him three different times, he is going to freeze in place and you're gonna have to stand around him and capture the zone in order to complete a heroic cryopod event. Now once you've done both of these steps, head back to the spider, talk to him again, and now you're going to have to go to the EDZ and investigate fallen caches. Now what exactly does this mean? Well, you're going to have to do a specific lost sector. If you open the map to the EDZ, you'll see the symbol for this quest appear in the winding cove. So head there and then head down into this lost sector. Once inside, you'll find a boss that, like most other Black Armory bosses, is immune and surrounded by those small drones. If you take out all the drones, the immune shield will go down and then you can properly damage this boss. Now once you've killed the boss, you simply head further into the Lost Sector, scanning Black Armory caches as you go. Now once you're done with this Lost Sector, the quest is actually just going to lead you to another Lost Sector with another boss again surrounded by those drones and more caches to scan. So make sure you have um, the right equipment to deal with quite a few adds and these bosses. They can be a bit tanky, so something like Blade Barrage for the Hunter, Hammers even for the Titan, or Chaos Reach for the Warlock can really help take these guys down once you've neutralized those shield drones. Next up, you're going to have to clear out yet another Lost Sector, and finally, once you've done that, your quest step is going to update, the mission will complete, and now you have to intercept high-value targets on Nessus, but specifically, you have to track down roaming captains. Now, where are those located? Well, one always does spawn on the Exodus Black area on Nessus, and now it's just gonna be waiting around. Like, do something in the background, watch a YouTube video on your phone, something like that, because you are just gonna be sitting there on the Exodus Black area and waiting for the text in the bottom left corner of your screen to appear that a high value target has entered the area. Now, when you see that, a ship, a fallen ship is going to come and drop him off where you see it happen in the background gameplay. Now, you don't actually have to 100% get the kill on this guy. 
but most people don't know that and it's gonna lead to some frustration where if you're not there right away, someone else is gonna melt him in one second and then fly away and you've got no shots on him. You just need to get some shots on him, you need to get some damage on him, and then he's capable of dropping the rewards you need. It's not 100% guaranteed though for whatever reason, so you do want to get a decent amount of damage, but if you see some other people waiting around, let them at least get shots on, spread the love, and then take that guy out. As soon as you do kill him, it's actually going to be a physical drop from his body, and that drop is going to be the item Origin Nessus, and it's going to update your quest yet again. Now, you're going to have to investigate Civic's cache, which is to do a specific Lost Sector on Nessus, as you can see in the background gameplay. Head down here, and there's going to be a couple bosses you have to face off with, but once you do manage to kill those guys, and then scan some Black Armory caches, your quest is going to update yet again, and now if you open your Nessus map, you're going to see a new location pop up, the Spider's Competition. This is a 620 light recommended activity, but there doesn't seem to be any sort of like time limit or uh, respawn restriction. You can die and then just get back up, and it involves you taking down a big boss. So it just might take you a while, but this does seem to be pretty soloable. So head into this area, which is actually the Goffin and Forge, you just haven't unlocked it yet, and there's going to be a massive servitor boss, you guessed it, surrounded by drones. Killing him, again, is just like you do with the other bosses, take down the drones, then put as much damage on him as possible. He's really, really tanky, so it's probably going to take you multiple phases of doing as much damage as you can. Shield drones respawn, take him down, do more damage. There's also going to be a decent amount of adds um, really pressuring you as you're doing this. But like I said, no respawning restrictions, uh, no time limit it seems. that You can die as much as you want, you can take as long as you want, but as long as you kill this boss, you will progress to the next step. And that next step is going to be to go back to the tower and talk to Ada-1. From here, you've almost unlocked the new forge. She's actually going to give you a basic sniper rifle frame, which, just like the machine gun frame that you had to complete to unlock the Volander forge, this is the frame you have to complete to unlock the Goffinen forge. So, just like the machine gun frame, you're going to have to collect Ether compound by killing fallen easy enough there but then you have to obtain a weapon core from one of the protected caches when the neutralized shield drone bosses spawn in but this time specifically on nessus whereas before you had to do that in the edz so one of those bosses would spawn there's the black armory caches you simply shoot the one shield drone open the cache and you'll get your uh, weapon core you don't have to kill the boss now you simply have to do that on nessus so head to artifacts edge that's one of the spawn points for these bosses wait around for uh, the shield drones to appear shoot one loot the cache you're good to go after that you're gonna have to get 25 sniper rifle precision kills and defeat five powerful enemies. If you have the Whisper of the Worm, it makes this a lot easier. If you don't, any powerful snipe rifle will do. And just head to the Leviathan Raid. Now, you don't actually have to do the raid, but the very beginning portion will have a bunch of enemies standing still, perfect for shooting with snipers to get precision shots on, and they're also yellow health, so they will count as powerful enemies. Shoot all eight of these guys, reload the area, shoot the next eight, reload, shoot the next eight, reload, shoot one, you're good to go. Now the next step is to get sniper rifle multi-kills, but you might as well just keep doing what you're doing. A quick double kill uh, on these stationary targets will count as a multi-kill, and you know one or two more times of killing these enemies and reloading this area is going to get you this step as well. Now moving on from there, the next and last step is going to be, as usual for these frames, collecting Radiant Seeds, which you can acquire randomly by killing powerful enemies. Now, you can just keep doing what you're doing, reloading the starting area of Leviathan, but a much easier way is that for whatever reason, some named bosses drop 10 Radiant Seeds at a time. It's kind of weird on which ones do and which ones don't, but one that for sure does is in the Lost Sector in the Dreaming City, called Aphelion's Rest and located right here. Head inside, kill the Lost Sector boss, and as you can see, he drops 10, exactly 10. So run out of the Lost Sector, run back in, kill him again, boom, there's your 20 in way less time than just normally farming these powerful enemies. 
Once you've completed this step, head back to Ada 1, and she's going to give you the Radiant Sniper Rifle Frame, which has only one requirement to ignite the Goffinen Forge. And that's it. If you do complete all three waves of the Goffinen Forge, you will get a powerful high light sniper rifle, definitely worth trying to get. But at this point, even without doing that, you've unlocked the Goffinen Forge. You can go to it, you can interact with it, you can match make with people and you can do it. The next step is of course just beating it. And so, that's how to do it. Definitely a lot longer than I thought it would be, but there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.